Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to add horror into your Gorilla Tag fan game. All the scripts I use in this video are linked in my Discord server down below, so make sure to download them. But apart from that, let's get into the tutorial. So starting off with my monster, I'm going to select it and I'm going to add a new component called Monster Navigation. You can rather drag it in or you can just search it, like that. Now with scripts on the monster, you should see all of these things come up. Don't worry, I'll quickly run you through it. Detection range is how close the player has to be to the monster for the monster to go after him. For example, if I set it to 10, then as you can see, the circle is much bigger compared to if I set it to something like 3, it's quite small. And by the way, I use 8.5 in my game. Next up is the monster wonder speed. I'd have this at something like 3 because it makes the monster wander quite slow. So then when they see the player, it will speed up and start chasing them really quickly. And I'd set the monster chase speed to 6.5. So it's over double. Next up, you'll see agent. What this is, is the nav mesh agent, which I have here. And to see that, you can go here and add component and search up nav mesh agent. But if you don't see it, then the way you get that is you go to window package manager and it should bring you to here after that change packages in project to unity registry go up here and search up ai when you search up ai like that you should see ai navigation come up so you just need to install and import it into your project now when you go to add component you should see nav mesh agent just like this and if you don't try restarting unity don't worry about altering any settings in this nav mesh you don't really need to touch it because all you're going to do is select nav mesh here and drag it in here or you can click on it and select monster navigation. Now for the points, what you're going to do is want to create some empty objects, just like I have done here, by right clicking, create empty, and name this to whatever you want. Make sure to not put your points too high or low, put it around waist height, so if your monster ran into it, it would be able to reach it. Now once you've scattered all your points around, if I quickly remove all of these, you can click the lock button up here on your monster, select point A and then hold down shift and click point D, and drag it in to where it says points and it will go like that or you can just click plus and drag them in one by one next up where it says tag string make sure it's set to player go to your gorilla rig go to your gorilla player scroll up and set the tag up here to player just like that so it tells the monster what to actually chase and now that's everything on the monster itself done for the jump scare what you're going to want to do is right click your monster create object cube and just scale it up a little bit like that and then just scale it like that so you should have something like this this here is going to be what the player collides with to get jump scared i've already set one up so i'm just going to select mine and as you can see here it is now on this collider you're going to want to go to layer and set it to non-walkable if you don't have non-walkable just add layer and in any of these or you can go here just write in non-walkable just like that the spelling doesn't have to be accurate, don't worry. Layer, non-walkable. After that, disable the mesh renderer. You might want to turn on gizmos so you can still see the box collider. And talking about the box collider, make sure to set it to each trigger. Now on the jump scare script, for the gorilla player, just drag in gorilla player from here, like that. Respawn point, of course you're going to want to drag in your respawn point, which is here for me. Now what maps to disable is, is the map what the game needs to disable for the player to be able to teleport back. For example, if the player was here and they were meant to teleport to over here, then the player would probably collide with this and just not be able to teleport back. So what we're going to drag in is the map, which is normal zone for me. Now all of these numbers, I just set them to 2.2 because I know this works because sometimes if the number's too small, the player will get stuck when teleporting. So go with this for a safe number. Now for the jump scare object, you're going to want to go to your gorilla player and open up the main camera and create a little cube. I'm not going to go in depth on how to make a good jump scare, but what you're going to want to do is create a cube, flip the normals. I'd recommend using Pro Builder for this. There's normally a little button on it. So here in my Pro Builder window, as you can see, you've got a button which is here called Flip Normals, which basically, if you're inside, you'll be able to see out. But when you flip the normals, It'll be in reverse so you'll only be able to see the inside now under this i have a little animation on this cube where in a minute you'll see if i get jump scared the cube will like spin around so all of that i'm just going to put under jump scare and hide it so on the jump scare again i'm going to quickly just drag in jump scare like that and that'll be working 
Now for the hit sound, what you're going to want to do is add an audio source by clicking add component and search your audio source, just like that. Now in your audio source, find your sound, for example here is mine, I'll drag that in, it's just a random glass it's in sound because I don't have a jump scare sound in the scene, but this is where you put your jump scare sound. Or you can just click on this little dot here and select sound. Normally play on awake sound by the way, so make sure to turn that off, otherwise it's going to just play as soon as you launch up your game which you don't really want. If your jump scare is too loud, you can turn it down here using the volume slider, but you probably won't need to if you want to make it scary. Now with audio source, make sure to drag it into here or click the little dot again and select it. Now if you click play, it probably still won't work because there's a couple of things you have to do. Whoa, 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 stop right there because YouTube tells me that only 0.00001% of you guys are subscribed. So make sure to go down below and hit that subscribe button. But apart from that, straight back to the video. Next up, you need to make the area for a monster to walk around in. So you need to go window, AI, and if you don't see AI, reload your Unity and make sure you have the package installed. Window, AI and then select navigation or navigation obsolete. Now the difference between these two is if you're on a late version of Unity like I am currently, you'll see navigation and navigation obsolete. This navigation is kind of newer and I don't like to use it, I prefer to use the old one, but it's up to you. But if you're on a version of Unity which most games use called 2021.3.26 F1, then you'll have the other type of navigation called navigation obsolete, but it will also be called navigation. Navigation obsolete is quite simple though because all you have to really touch is bake and when you click bake it'll bake the area for your monster to walk around in. So just to make it clear that's all you have to do is click bake if you're on an older version of Unity. However if you're on a later version of Unity you're going to have to create a nav mesh surface. To make a nav mesh surface all you're going to do is go to the plus or you can right click here, go AI and then nav mesh surface just like this. On your nav mesh surface, you should already see this component here called nav mesh surface. If you don't, you should be able to search it just like this and click it there. And on this, you're going to click make. Another reason why I don't like the nav mesh in the late versions of Unity and why I prefer to use the obsolete version is because I can't decide where the monster can and can't go. I'm not sure if there's a way to fix this, but yeah, I just don't like it because if I bake the other version by going to here and clicking bake, I've defined this object here as not walk. But if you are using this version, again, it's quite simple. In Inspector, so just click Bake. Now, again, it really doesn't matter what version you use apart from the things that I just listed. So when you bake it, you should see always blue. If you're in gizmo mode, check that you're in it. And you might also see a little pop up down here. Make sure to turn on Nav Mesh Surface. It's something like that. Otherwise, you probably won't be able to see it. And another thing I forgot to mention about the nav mesh is that you can control how slopey a slope has to be for the monster to not be able to walk up it. For example, if I had 41, the monster would be able to go down here. But if I had something like 30, the monster can't. This might be useful if your player is running across here, monsters behind him, and he jumps down here and the monster can't get there. So he's safe. But again, if I set it to 45 and bake, it can now go down there. And now when I start the game, as you can see, the monster's walking around, trying to locate the player, going to the random points we set up, just like that, and now he's going to A. And now he's going back to, let's have a look. It looks like D. And at this point, he's gonna try and knock onto the player. I could just move him near the monster, and now, as you can see, he's been chased, and boom, jump scare. Now, if you found this tutorial helpful, make sure to check out this video here on how to make a map for your Gorilla Tag fan game. And apart from that, have a brilliant rest of your day and goodbye.